Thank you for checking out Lakehead International's videos. You're about to watch one of our Lakehead International live webinars, a fun and informative way to learn more about Lakehead while also meeting faculty, staff, and current students. If you have any questions throughout today's video, please comment below. Otherwise, let's get started. On that note, I would like to officially welcome you to Lakehead University and share a bit more about our institution and why we're so proud of our academic offerings here at Lakehead. So for those of you who don't know, we are a public institution located here in Canada, more specifically in the province of Ontario. We do have two campuses located in Aurelia and Thunder Bay, Ontario, and some of those uh, campuses offer a wide range of programming, which I'll discuss a bit further later on in today's presentation. Uh, but before we do that, I want to share a bit about some of the things that we're, we're the most proud of in terms of our rankings. So we're uh, number one in Canada in terms of not-for-profit research income. We're also the number one university in North America with under 9,000 students, ranked by Times Higher Education Global Impact Rankings. Here in Canada, we also have the Maclean's Magazine Rankings, which looks at all institutions uh, across our beautiful country, and we are actually in Canada's top 10 in our category. And then looking inward and things that we're proud to offer here at Lakehead is it includes our undergraduate entrance scholarships. Last year alone, we gave over $7.8 million to international students joining us for bachelor's degrees. Uh, and, and that helped them, of course, pursue their education. And then some of those scholarships are even renewable. So that means that going into their second, third and even fourth year, they may have an opportunity to continue receiving that scholarship or funding. Other things that we're proud of here at Lakehead include our small classroom sizes where our student to professor ratio is 15 to one on the Thunder Bay campus and 13 to one on the Aurelia campus. What that really boils down to and what we are the, the most proud of in my eyes is uh, that small classroom experiences and, and what we can offer here at Lakehead uh, empowers us to have strong employment rates. And so 96.3% of our grads are actually employed within two years upon walking across that stage. It is above the Ontario average, which is 94.3% for all other Ontario university graduates. Diving a bit deeper into some of the Lakehead offerings, as I noted, we are an Ontario accredited public university. So that means that uh, when you complete your degree here at Lakehead University, you will be eligible for your postgraduate work permit and beyond. Um, in terms of our student body and, and where our folks come from around the world, we're excited to have over 8,600 students from around the world joining us from 80 plus different countries, always looking di to diversify and grow that number, of course. And hopefully one day you'll, you'll be counted in that headcount one day. Um, those students are pursuing a wide range of programming, including over 85 undergraduate and graduate degree programs, some of which offer a cooperative education option, including kinesiology, which we'll chat about in just a moment here. As we continue on this journey of learning about Lakehead, I'm sure you're wondering what are the academics like and, and what do you offer? Well, of course, we have our areas of study that include business administration, engineering, science and environmental studies, natural resources management, education, social sciences and humanities, health and behavioral sciences, law and graduate studies. That is a quick overview of Lakehead University, though. Um, it is time to welcome and introduce our special guests um, from kinesiology, the School of Kinesiology, that is. And first and foremost, I'd like to introduce Dr. Erin Pearson to share more about herself and what she does here at Lakehead. Thank you so much and welcome to the attendees. Um, I am Dr. Erin Pearson in the School of Kinesiology and my areas of focus include health promotion, lifestyle psychology, so trying to understand um, why people move, for example. We know kinesiology is the study of movement, uh, diet, uh, sleep, substance use, all kinds of behaviors. I work often with community partners and uh, I'm also a trained collective coach and focus on things like motivational interviewing to help people uh, modify their behaviors. Awesome. Thank you for joining us, Erin. It's a pleasure to have you. Next, we'll pass it over to Dr. Ian Newhouse. Hi, everybody. Uh, yeah, so I'm Ian Newhouse, and I'm the director for this school and also a professor. My areas of teaching and research are in exercise physiology and nutrition, and similar to Aaron, also health promotion. Uh, currently, we're doing some research with health promotion to prevent chronic disease in Sandy Lake First Nations. Um, as the director, I oversee 10 faculty members and four staff members, and usually somewhere close to 300 undergrad students. And then what you might hear about later is our graduate program where we have about 30 students. Awesome, thank you for joining us, Ian. And last but not least, we have Leanne Smith. 
Hello. I am the Practice of Kinesiology and Com Community Placement Coordinator in the School of Kinesiology. You might run into me in a few different ways. You could see me at recruitment and orientation events, either before you come or uh, right when you first start. I'll also be reaching out to you over your years here to share workshop and volunteer opportunities. And you can connect with me if you have any questions about our co-op program, our study abroad program. Yes, you could even study back abroad in a different country <laughs> and um, other opportunities specific to kinesiology. And then finally, in your upper years, I'm your third year academic advisor and as well, a facilitator of uh, career exploration and outdoor experience courses. Awesome. Well, I think that today's panel for our undergraduate studies is, is diverse in terms of the areas that they support and, of course, the studies that they're most expertise in. Um, with that being said, we'll also be joined by our graduate panel later on in today's presentation. But first and foremost, let's kick things off and chat a bit about what is kinesiology? What does the School of Kinesiology offer here at Lakehead University? And for that, I'll pass it over to Dr. Newhouse. Sure. Um, Dr. Pearson already mentioned that kinesiology is the study of human movement. And so that's what we're all about. But you can study human movement from numerous perspectives. Um, and so you'll you can apply it to sport, to work, to rehabilitation, and to physical activity. And it's a it's a good degree these days because health is such an important uh, topic. And so, if you're interested in any kind of a health career, kinesiology might be a good starting point. Uh, we have a lot of students that go into the rehab field after their four year degree here, but others that now you can get. Uh, you can go kind of like a board exam for kinesiology and become a registered kinesiologist. And now that's a regulated health profession. So there's a career straight from the four-year degree. Some of our students also combine their kinesiology degree with education. And so they end up in the school system teaching physical education and maybe some other topics. So it's a, it's a four-year honors degree, which means that you have to maintain a 70% average or better to stay in the program. And later we'll talk about uh, what also defines an honors program is the fourth year research project, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, Leanne can also talk to you about the co-op program. And I think that's about it. We can also You can also combine your education concurrently or you can do it consecutively. Thank you for sharing more. I know you touched on sort of the the different areas of study that our students will will focus in on. I know that uh, something that our students often reflect on, and even as educators, you know best, is that uh, having that approach that's really multidisciplinary and, and also looks at the psychological, sociological, and cultural factors that influence physical activity in all populations uh, gives people that ability to really work collaborative collaboratively in interprofessional environments and teams to deliver best care for uh, health populations. So I think that kinesiology in the school at Lakehead does a great job at that. Um, to dive into your first year at a glance as an undergraduate student, I'm going to pass it over to uh, Leanne to share more. And then I know uh, Dr. Pearson will touch on some of the courses that she's delivered in the past. Great. Yeah, this is a, a quick summary of what you'll cover in our first year. So there'll be four kinesiology-based courses. Two of them will be in your first semester, two in the second semester. Exciting thing about these courses, and uh, you'll have labs as well. So you'll have a lecture component as well as two-hour labs in two of the courses, as well as a tutorial in one of the courses. So this gives you the opportunity to apply what you're learning in lecture. Makes it uh, much more engaging. Then you'll also be completing a chemistry course, as well as two English courses. And then you have the opportunity to choose up to three half-year courses. So that's one and a half FCE in whatever areas of interest to you. So this will make your kinesiology degree specific to you. Makes it um, quite exciting. There's a lot of uh, elective op options for you to choose. Um, I'm going to pass over to you, Dr. Pearson, to talk about your uh, first year course. Sure, thank you. Um, 
yeah, building on that idea of the lab or tutorial, we sometimes call it, it's a smaller group um, from the larger class. So it's a really neat opportunity to um, work more closely with your peers, which is one of the great things about Lakehead. I teach Kinesiology 1113, Principles of Health, and we focus in this course on uh, exploring both the personal determinants of health, so the health behaviors we engage in, physical activity being an important one, and also the social determinants of health, our culture, our ethnicity, society, the environment. How do all of these things intersect to influence our wellness? Uh, we look at this through a psychological lens, um, and again, opportunities through labs to do things like physical activity together, uh, to learn more about how we move, and, and also sort of those skills that are important, especially in first year, those life skills. So how do you manage your time? How do you prioritize your tasks? How do you adjust to university as a first year student? So I do try to integrate those things into this course as well. Thank you for sharing more. I also want to touch on those electives. I think to those students that perhaps maybe even want to down the road set up their own kinesiology practice and, and maybe even want to take business electives. I come from the School of Business or, or Business Administration at Lakehead. So uh, there's a lot of variety here to really craft your own degree at Lakehead, which I think is really exciting for our students as well. Speaking of crafting your degree, um, I, I think I'll pass back to Leanne to share more about those students that wish to become uh, a teacher within the realm of kinesiology and how you can combine this with education. Right. We have two options for education degrees, concurrent education. Um, one would prepare you to teach at the primary and junior level, so the younger kids, and the other at the intermediate senior or high school level. The kinesiology courses in the core curriculum that you would cover in your first year is the exact same as if you were doing the straight honors bachelor of kinesiology. The difference is that for someone who's um, training to teach elementary students, you would have a specific uh, elective course in first year that is focused on either music or visual arts, and then one other half year course that you can choose in whatever discipline you want. Then as a, someone preparing to teach um, high school students, you have that one full FCE, so that could be two courses. And again, those are up to you to choose where you want to go, but typically they would be focused in an area that maybe be your second choice of what you'd like to teach. So kinesiology, physical and health education would be your, your main focus. And then the um, other teachable is where you would choose your elective. In addition, you'd be taking a specific education course in first year. That would be another difference. Perfect. And to those students who are interested in uh, kinesiology and education, you're more than welcome to check out our in-depth session with teacher education to learn more about teachables and, and primary and junior versus intermediate senior, the delivery of those courses. It's a really exciting uh, webinar where we focus in on, on that aspect of your curriculum. Well, we have you, Leanne, I think it's a great segue into our, our next learning outcome or opportunity, which is cooperative education. Right. We're lucky enough to have a co-op option for our kinesiology students. So what this means is it's going to add an extra year to your, your education, but that extra year is four four-month paid work term experiences. So this allows you to graduate with both your degree and one year of work experience so that when you're applying for jobs, you're definitely meeting that requirement of having a degree and experience. Typically our students will apply upon entry, but you don't officially get into our KIN program until after you've completed your first year and you've attained an average of at least 75% in your four kinesiology courses. Once you're accepted into co-op in year two, you can start with your first work term uh, experience between in the summer between second and third year, or you can actually wait until the fall of third year to apply, and then you would complete all four of your work terms between third and fourth year. So a summer, fall, winter, and another summer. In terms of employment opportunities, we've had our students placed in a number of different settings so they can get a lot of different experiences. It's great for checking out different opportunities to see what you might really like and maybe what you thought you'd like and you realize, hmm, that's not for me. 
<laughs> but just some examples, we've had students work as rehabilitation assistants, chiropractic assistants, laser therapists, sleep technologists, poly some, um, pulmonary function technicians, student ergonomists. Uh, they've worked in health promotion and beer, been peer wellness educators, movement coaches. And we even had uh, the first entrepreneurial co-op opportunity from one of our students. So the student actually started their own business. So that's another opportunity you can do through co-op. Thank you for sharing more. I'll add on to that just briefly and say that this also may help students recognize and, and better understand their own passions within the field of kinesiology and how they may take that into further education. So if you may want to pursue a, an alternative degree upon graduation or even go into a master's level education or professional school, this uh, co-op experience could certainly guide that uh, exploration of whether or not that is a career that you would like to do day in and day out. With that being said, uh, as we continue on the discussion of how to get involved and really uh, understand the the cooperative, pardon me, the, the study of kinesiology, I think it's time to chat a bit about our fourth year research project. So I'll pass over to Dr. Newhouse and Dr. Pearson. Sure, I'll I'll start then and hand it over to Dr. Pearson. Yeah, this is like a capstone uh, course for our program. So all of our students in their fourth year do a research project, and they can either do it as a team. So usually three students form a team working on a project over the full year, or you can do it individually under the supervision of a faculty member. And it's a, it's a great part of our program. There's a whole lot of learning that takes place and whether you're going to carry on in, in a research career or not, uh, I think a lot of the learning objectives that you have doing this course will apply. So I'll let uh, Dr. Pearson add to that. Sure, thank you. Um, yeah, so one of the, the great things about our jobs is we get to teach, but we also get to do research, sort of a half and half mix. So um, supervising fourth year research projects is something most of us do. Um, and I just wanted to reiterate, we are one of the top undergraduate universities for research um, and one of the few kinesiology programs in Canada to have this component. So I do think it sets us apart from other universities, which is really um, of value to you at the prospective student. And in fact, we have three students representing our program today uh, at national conference being held at the University of Toronto, um, who are presenting their fourth year thesis projects. And one of the, the, the things they always come back and say is, you know, people always comment on how we get to create our own projects at Lakehead from start to finish. So it's a really valuable opportunity and you get to refine a lot of skills in an area that interests you, which is exciting. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing more about that. I'll, I'll, I'll also add my two cents, essentially, is that uh, being able to select your own project here at Lakehead and in consultation, of course, with uh, a chair or coordinator or one of your professors, it also means that there's an ability to have a, a direct impact in terms of what your research that you're conducting. So maybe it's an impact that will help a community back home or your, your new community of Thunder Bay. Um, it's great to see students that are so passionate because when they see that there is uh, an actual, you know, outcome to their uh, project, that they are really excited about that. And, and especially with the ability to then go to conferences and present that, um, we see they're, they're always excited for those types of opportunities. On that note, that does wrap up things. I know it was quite brief with undergrad studies, but we're going to transition and segue into our uh, graduate studies team. So we'll join you over there. At this point, it's my pleasure to welcome and introduce our special guests from the graduate side of kinesiology. I'll pass things over to Erin Sargent to introduce herself. Hello, everyone. Um, my role um, at Lakehead is placement coordinator and assistant to graduate programs in the School of Kinesiology. Um, I am that person that you can reach out to with all your little questions that you might have about our programs as you're preparing your applications um, or getting ready to come into our program. Um, during the school year, I will be assisting with uh, setting up placements within our community, within Canada, and even around the world. Um, I'm your go-to person to find the right placement for you if you are in the graduate diploma program. And I'll talk more about that when we get to our slides. And I do help students with advising throughout the program. Um, if you have questions, you can certainly come to me at any time, and I will connect you with the right people. Um, if I'm not able to answer your question. 
Awesome. Thank you for joining us, Erin. Uh, next, I'll pass over to Dr. Sinden. Yeah. Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Dr. Catherine Sinden or Catherine or Dr. Sinden, however you wish. Um, so I'm an associate professor in the School of Kinesiology and I'm currently our grad coordinator. So what that means is that um, as the graduate coordinator, I work with Aaron really, really closely just to make sure that our graduate program runs uh, smoothly. I oversee how we operationalize our program. I support you through that process as well. Um, Aaron's an incredible resource to help you figure out which program might be the best one for you when you're looking at uh, our multitude of programs that we'll go through today. Uh, but I'm also a, a resource for that as well. So um, as an associate professor, I teach in our School of Kinesiology. I teach mar mostly in our graduate program. So um, I'll talk a little bit about that in the future here. And I have a fairly active program of research as well that I'll talk about. So um, I have graduate students. I teach in our program and right now I'm helping to uh, oversee our graduate program as well so lovely to be here thank you for asking thank you for joining us I'm excited to have the two of you share your knowledge about the program and, and guide our audience today I'm sure many of them are excited to learn more about the Masters of Science in Kinesiology as well as the Graduate Diploma for those of you who don't know which programs we offer at the grad level Here's a quick uh, sneak peek at that. So like I noted, we have our graduate diploma in professional kinesiology, which essentially provides professional training and clinical skills upgrading for current and future practitioners of kinesiology. And, and that, of course, is really tied closely to why Erin support, uh, supports those placed and opportunities, which she'll dive into a bit further later on in today's presentation. And then on the Masters of Science kinesiology, kinesiology side, we have two approaches, either course-based or thesis-based. So it depends on what is the delivery or, or how do you best learn, essentially. And of course, it also ties into where do you want to take that degree? Where do you want to go with it after that? So for our course-based students, it will help you build clinical skills, gain professional training, develop your understanding of both the clinical-based research commonly used in healthcare settings. For that thesis-based approach, it's going to help students uh, develop a well-rounded understanding of kinesiology research, and it will also allow you to contribute to the field through a thesis conducted via a one-on-one -on -one supervision with a faculty member. So one day, perhaps you may even uh, be able to work with Dr. Sinden or one of our several professors in the School of Kinesiology. Um, but we're going to kick things off with uh, chatting a bit about the graduate diploma, and I'll pass it over to Aaron to share more. Thank you so much, Jordan. Um, our graduate diploma program is 12 months in length. And in those 12 months, you'll go through four semesters. Each semester, you have a theory course uh, with online modules, and then you meet together in what are called grand rounds uh, to discuss research, to discuss case studies, and learn to become a practitioner. That's what this program is all about. It's really about learning to think like a practitioner and be able to build those skills. So you have a theory course each semester matched with a practical course. And those practical courses are on campus five days in a row. They're very intensive and they are actually a lot of fun. Um, and so you'll apply the theory that you learn throughout the semester in this practical setting. Uh, when you are taking your theory course, it, they are offered in a hybrid setting. So you can come on campus um, and join your classmates, which is really nice. But if you are off campus, um, if you are living in another part of Canada uh, for part of it, then you are able to join us online. So each semester you have uh, the theory and the practical. And then between the months of January and July, you would have an opportunity to do a 200 hour placement. You can do that full time or you can do that part time with a minimum of 10 hours a week. And my role is to set that up for you and ensure you have a really valuable practical uh, position. We encourage um, our graduate students to find a placement or I will help you find one where you actually feel like you're an employee. You're not just shadowing, but over time you feel like you're contributing to the workplace. Um, and you can choose that in a variety of settings. You can see on the, the right hand side, there's some sample practical placements, which could be in uh, one of our hospitals. It could be in a clinic. Um, it could be at a, a hospital somewhere else. We have students um, doing ergonomics placements as well in uh, factory settings. So there is a huge variety um, and you're welcome to reach out to me and talk about that if, if you have um, an, an interest in a particular area and I can tell you um, what opportunities are available. Unique to this program 
is in our summer, we offer a business ethics and risk management uh, program or course. And through that, you learn how to set up a company and basically practice um, as an entrepreneur. Many kinesiologists in Canada will start their own business. And so we support that with one of our courses um, in the final semester. Uh, and we do have a culminating practical course called the Practice of Kinesiology, where the instructor brings together all of the information uh, from all of your courses so that you can integrate it and really understand and, and hone in on your practical skills um, in that final summer. So by the end of the 12 months, you should feel confident to go out and practice in the field and uh, it will go by quickly, gar guaranteed. Awesome. Aaron, I, I want to take this opportunity to reiterate uh, the work that you do here at Lakehead and, and the importance of it because the list that I actually uh, have on the screen today of sample placements is a, is a very small amount of the list that Aaron compiled for me in preparation to showcase all of the opportunities where our students could have gone. Um, and, and like she noted, they could be located right here on campus at our wellness clinic or within our athletics department. They could be in our hometowns of Thunder Bay, or perhaps you want to go visit our other campus in Aurelia. But they also go beyond just the province of Ontario, and they could be Canada-wide and, and further. So it's always exciting to see where students are interested in taking their placement opportunities. And, and perhaps one day, maybe you'll come to Erin um, and you'll bring something to her attention where uh, that will be exciting to showcase a new opportunity here at Lakehead University in terms of that exchange of information and, and placement opportunities. So thank you for sharing. Um, do you have any final closing notes or, or things to remind our audience of? Um, definitely reach out. Um, a wonderful aspect now about our, our graduate diploma program is that our international students have the opportunity to get a full postgraduate work visa. Um, so in this short period of time, uh, we can prepare you for that work. And many of our students have been offered employment uh, if they've done a wonderful job at their placement and, a, and a pla an em employment uh, comes up. So keep that in mind as you're choosing what you'd like to do. Awesome. Well, thank you again for sharing more. We'll shift gears here and we'll pass it over to Dr. Sinden to share more about our Masters of Science in Kinesiology. The, the first one we're going to take a peek at, though, is our course-based approach. So I'll, I'll have her share more about it. Sure, great. Uh, thank you so much. And great job, Erin, in highlighting some of the incredible features of our graduate diploma program. And I think one of the unique features of our course-based program is that it has fundamentals that align really nicely with our graduate diploma program. So for example, um, in our in our year one, um, you'll be taking the same courses, very similar courses as the students in the grad diploma program. And the reason for that is that this program is really set up to help you build those skills as a clinician, um, however you decide to practice, but also give you that uh, little taste of what it might be like to do a research project. So you might be that student who's like, hey, you know what, I really want to practice, and I really want to do that, but I don't quite have the skills yet to do that. And I want to hone my skills a little bit more. Um, and I actually I think I want to do a bit of a research project as well. And this is the course for you. So if you don't want to completely do a, a research thesis project and you're like, I want a little bit uh, more than, you know, just doing coursework, this is the program for you. Um, so I'm going to go through some of the courses like Erin did. Uh, she did a really nice job, but I'm going to kind of go through them in a little bit more detail. Um, I teach heavily in this program. So correspondingly in the graduate diploma program as well. Uh, so in your first fall term, uh, you'll be taking clinical research methods and kinesiology. So like I said, uh, if you're taking a thesis-based program um, in any sort of, in our, and I'll talk about that in a minute, you need to take a research methods course. So if you're going to read about research and understand research and use an evidence-informed approach when you're practicing, uh, you really need to be able to read and understand research. So that's why we've included this uh, unique course in our course-based master. So you need to take a clinical research methods course. Um, and at the same time, you're taking advanced clinical assessment uh, skills in both the theory and in practice. So in that course, you're learning how to assess musculoskeletal injuries um, at an advanced level. Um, in the winter term from January to April, uh, you'll have your clinical data analysis. So that's essentially a statistical analysis course, uh, but we've really designed that, this course to be have a focus in uh, practice. So although it's it is, it is called clinical data analysis for a reason. Um, it is embedded within a statistical framework. 
statistical analysis framework, uh, but you get to sort of look at how we might analyze data from a clinical lens. So a little bit of a different shift, um, but um, still sort of gets you thinking about statistical modeling a little bit. Um, and then you take my course in communication and leadership and advanced ergonomics and discipline management. Uh, so my area of practice, I worked as a kinesiologist for 15 years. Uh, my area of practice was in kinesiology, so I feel so very fortunate uh, that I'm able to both teach and inform my research by my uh, years of practice in this space. So when you take my course, um, we talk about theory and we talk about how science informs uh, current ergonomic and disability management practice. Uh, but I lean into quite a bit, uh, a lot of my clinical experience. I still practice a little bit in ergonomics, so I use that as well uh, to give you some real life examples. Um, and I think one of the cool things that we did this year, right, Aaron, was we took all the students to a factory here in um, in Thunder Bay, which I think was really well received. Uh, so during the practical component, we took the students to an actual uh, plant and they got to actually see how ergonomics um, informs health and safety in that environment. So I think that's pretty cool. As well, students get something called their functional capacity evaluation certification in both the grad diploma and in this course. Uh, so that's a real advantage when you want to go and practice and actually assess function. A lot of organizations are looking for you to have that certification. Uh, so you get that from this particular course. There's, I think there's a lot of uh, really cool applied practical experiences that you get in this program while you're taking that course, as well as the other courses, um, as well in the grad diploma program. Um, and then in the spring summer, you take advanced exercise prescription um, and the person delivering that course does a really fantastic job as well and in integrating uh, some of the practical components like how to look at uh, specific populations and design exercise prescriptions for those special populations. Uh, you take a business ethics and risk management issues uh, course as well and then the practice of kin as well. I don't know if you wanna expand on that at all, Erin, those two courses. <clears throat> Sure. So for business ethics and risk management, um, by the end of that, you've developed your, your business plan and your marketing plan and all those things that need to go with it. Uh, and part of the practice of kinesiology, uh, the last sort of eight hours of that course is dedicated towards pitching your business as a group. And we actually have a contest on campus um, and our students get together and as groups and they uh, create a company within those short eight hours and pitch it. Um, and they get judged by some faculty and staff on campus. And so that's a, a really fun way to to exit uh, the summer um, for, yeah. for those courses. That's amazing. Thanks, Aaron. And I think what's really cool about that, too, is that um, students do have that opportunity, like Aaron said, to build a company. So uh, when I practice as a kinesiologist, a lot of my peers, many of my peers, develop their own company and still to this day run their own company. So uh, like Aaron said, a lot of kinesiologists end up practicing. And so by taking this program, you get some really good hands on knowledge of how to do that um, and think about the science of practice as well as the practical application. And then in the last four months of your term, uh, you take two courses. One is the Knowledge Translation and Kinesiology and Health course, and the second is the course-based master's thesis-based co project course. So the KT course, we call it Knowledge Translation. It's really important, right, when you're thinking about clinical practice, like what does the current evidence say? Like what does the science say? How should we be treating our patients? Um, and so this course is really designed for you to learn how to read research and how to integrate it within practice, how to identify a knowledge gap and really sort of design a project around that. So it's a really critical component uh, when we think about practice of in air, any area. This particular course is focused in kinesiology, but also health more broadly. Um, and then the course-based master's project. So if you're going to take a master's level course, you need to have a little bit of a research taste. So this is that uh, this is that course. Uh, so we have uh, faculty members within the School of Kinesiology right now uh, supervising a group-based project. Uh, so you would work in a group, a small group, probably three to four people max. Um, and you would select a project that aligns with your interests. And that project supervisor would help guide you along that process. So uh, you still get a taste of what research is like, but at the same time, uh, you get a little bit more guidance, which I think is a really strong feature of that course. So that's our graduate program course-based masters in a nutshell. I don't know, Erin, if you have anything you want to add? No, that's excellent. Thanks, Catherine. Awesome. Yeah, no Thank problem. you for sharing more about the, the course-based approach. For the audience, of course, you can all see some of those sample Masters of Science uh, course-based projects listed there. Um, we won't dive into them further, I'm sure, if you would like to learn more about them or perhaps even get a, a sampling or a taste of what you can expect in the program. You know where to find our contacts within the School of Kinesiology, but let's shift gears and chat for those students that are, are considering the more research-intensive thesis approach. Uh, let's take a peek at that and I'll pass it back to Dr. Sinden. 
Yeah, for sure. So this is um, the program that you would take if you're thinking, hey, you know what, I really love research. And, um, you know, I want to get more experience in that space, I might be thinking about doing a PhD, or want a research focused um, position. Um, even if that's not what you're thinking, even if you're thinking about clinical practice, it's still um, a great postgraduate program for you to consider. So our Masters of Science in Kinesiology program is designed to be a two year program. In the first year, you take research methods and design, as well as your statistical analysis and kinesiology course. So um, as I mentioned in the course-based program, you need to take a research methods course and you need to take a SATS course. It's really hard to do research without those fundamental skills. So uh, we give you um, a graduate level uh, courses in those particular areas. Um, and then you take one full FC of kinesiology graduate elective. So there's multiple multiple electives that you can take that we offer within the School of Kinesiology. You can see some of them listed there. Uh, you can also work with your supervisor. So often what we'll do as um, a thesis-based supervisor is look at what your project is going to be and we design what's called a directed study for you. So helping you gain in those skills that you need in order to be able to um, deliver a component of your thesis. So maybe you don't have as much experience, for example, um, with our motion, motion capture system or Perhaps you need to understand better uh, psychometric properties of a tool that you want to use in your thesis. Uh, so we would design and work with you to design a course so that you can really hone those skills and be able to implement them as you're conducting and implementing uh, your research project. Uh, and then you do a thesis project. So the way our thesis project works is that you propose your thesis. Um, we have we have you'll have a thesis committee that you work with. Um, you'll work with your supervisor to put together that thesis committee. Uh, you propose your thesis. It's both written and and an oral defense um, while you're sort of, you know, building your coursework around that. Um, and then you run your research project. So the idea is for you to, you know, gain those skills like collecting data, analyzing data, synthesizing it, making sense of it within the context of the current literature. So mm -hmm. I think that's kind of the cool thing about doing research is you get to sort of have your data set and really look at it and really delve into it, understand how to analyze it, understand what it means and apply it to a research question. Um, yeah, and then you have to not have to, you get the opportunity to defend that thesis. So uh, you present that back to your committee and to our, our faculty more widely, you have a written document and an oral defense as well. So uh, that's sort of the process of the thesis. It's very traditional. Um, it's a very traditional process um, that you'll see across the board. So uh, that's sort of our Masters of Science in Kinesiology. We do have a specialization in gerontology as well, uh, if that's something that's of interest to you as well. So um, while you're, if you're thinking in that space, one of the things that you might want to think about is who you want to work with. So one of the key features that differentiates the thesis-based masters is that you work one-on-one -on -one with a supervisor. Uh, so you would want to take a look and see who um, who our faculty are, what kind of areas do they work on in. For example, my area of research is in ergonomics, disability management, occupational health and safety. Uh, so my students tend to have an interest in that area. We have other uh, people that have interest in uh, social psychology of sport. Um, that might be an interest area for you, uh, human physiology. So it depends on what your area is. You would want to align uh, your project with one of our faculty members um, and approach them, see if they have the room in their research program to take on um, a thesis student at that point in time, um, interview with them, make sure it's a good fit, all those kind of things. So um, I'm happy to talk to you about that process a little bit more if you would like to reach out and, and get some guidance on, on how to approach that process. Awesome. Thank you for sharing more details about the thesis-based approach and, of course, uh, hinting at sort of what the next steps are for students that are maybe not applicants quite yet, although, of course, today's uh, webinar is applicant-focused. If you're still considering an application or still weighing your options about where you may pursue uh, your, your next degree, um, you know where to find us once again to, to chat more and hopefully find a supervisor that's able to support your uh, your research interests. Next, we Jordan. are going to, oh, sorry. Yeah, of course. Yeah, ahead, no Aaron. problem. I just wondered if I could add where they'll find some more information. Yeah. Um, on our website, we have a couple of documents that will be helpful for you. One is a table that um, summarizes the three programs. So if you're you're not sure which one is right for you, um, you can download that document and take a look. You can also reach out to myself or Dr. Sinden um, with, with questions about that. We've been included a new document this year that will help you uh, understand what each of our professors uh, research is all about, what their research program is and what it's like to work with them. So if you go onto our website and into the thesis program, you can download that document 
and have a better understanding of each individual professor. And that might help you um, make a decision as to who you want to reach out to um, when you're you're deciding on on the thesis program and a supervisor. Awesome. And I'll help uh, our audience understand that. So if you're on lakeheadu.ca, if you hover over the programs tab uh, at the top, you're going to see something called academic departments. Uh, within academic departments, you're looking for kinesiology, uh, also known as the School of Kinesiology. If uh, it's easier for you to find it through our faculty setup, we are also located within the health and behavioral sciences faculty. So I hope that helps our audience navigate uh, there. Like Aaron said, though, if you need the direct resources and it's easier to connect with us over email, you're more than welcome to reach out. Um, so I'm going to shift gears here and pass back to Dr. Sinden because uh, on the heels of a research and, and thesis-based approach, this is actually one of her very own students, uh, Christopher. So I'll let her share more about what he's actively pursuing and how she's supporting this portfolio. For sure. Thank you so much for this opportunity. So uh, yeah, great picture of Chris. Uh, so Chris is um, my second year master's student and he was born and raised in Sault Ste. Marie. Um, and he did his undergraduate training uh, at the University of Toronto in kinesiology and physical education. So um, he came uh, to, to, he interviewed with me a couple of years ago. Um, and like most of my students um, have come from elsewhere, haven't actually come from uh, Thunder Bay. Most of my students have come from Southern Ontario to, to work here with me. Um, his project's kind of an interesting project. Um, a lot of my research has been focused around looking at occupational health of first responder groups. So um, I've worked with a lot of many different fire services, most recently, most closely with Thunder Bay Fire Rescue. Um, but I've also done a lot of work with the paramedic service here and with uh, Treaty 3 police. So uh, and really looking at indices that are that um, are related to mental health of this particular population. Um, so we have started to build a partnership with a uh, fire service in southwestern Ontario. Uh, that's what we call composite fire service. So they have both career and uh, professional or career and volunteer fire fighters. So that's a really unique context for us to do uh, this particular work. And Chris is taking the lead at just trying to figure out what is their mental health burden right now. So he's administering some questionnaires uh, that he spent his directed study, uh, making sure that there's valid and reliable tools to measure the constructs that he wants to measure. Um, so that was his directed study. And he, uh, he took the knowledge translation course as an elective as well, because a big part of his project is looking at um, knowledge, what we call knowledge translation theory. So when we build these partnerships in occupational health, we want to understand like what makes them work, what doesn't make them work? What are some of the barriers? What are some of the facilitators? So if I reach out to an organization, how do I know that um, I'm going to meet their needs, right? So it's really important when we're doing something called applied research, which is a lot of my work, um, we want to make sure it makes sense to the person who's going to use it. So uh, we use something called knowledge translation theory to help us understand that. So his project is twofold. Uh, one is to understand the mental health burden in this particular fire service. And then secondly, to understand, you know, what makes the, what makes our partnership work? What makes it tick? What makes it uh, not work in some situations? Um, how do we know if we're delivering what they want? So, um, yeah, a really interesting, complex project. Uh, his committee is comprised of a faculty member here in the School of Kinesiology um, and as well as a Canada Research Chair in Knowledge Translation Theory. So, uh, is a really strong committee supporting his progress through the program. So that's Chris and super proud of him. He's doing a great job. And uh, yeah, he's looking to do a PhD when he's done. So helping him, helping to support him through that as well. So as a master supervisor, it's one thing to support your student in the immediate uh, goals, but also understanding what their future goals are. So I spend a lot of time talking to my students about where they want to go and where do they want to end up? Because if you do want to do a PhD, it's, um, you know, I, I want to work with you to make sure that you're positioned well for that. So that means let's find you conferences that you can present at. Let's look at your publication record and make sure that you're publishing so that uh, you're a strong candidate for that PhD program. Program. So we've been working uh, to do that with Chris as well. Awesome. I'm so glad we had the opportunity to highlight Chris's profile uh, because although his research 
is what the students want to hear about and they're excited. I think that really today we got to see how passionate you are to be his supervisor and supporting him and his current needs, but also like you just said, uh, supporting what his, his future might entail, whether that's uh, pursuits to the next level and, and perhaps maybe following in a similar uh, steps to you going into the acad world of academia. So thank you for sharing that. Um, I think that's Pleasure. a good segue actually, as we talk about academia and your pursuits, uh, I want to give you the opportunity to share with our audience today what research you're conducting here at Lakehead, just to give them a bit sure. of a teaser um, and get them excited to hopefully join us one day very soon. Yeah, and like I've said, um, I feel really fortunate because um, I practiced as a kinesiologist and I worked in ergonomics. So um, I'm really fortunate that I get to bring that lens to my research now too. So, uh, and almost build the evidence that, uh, that I use as a clinician and that my peers use as well. Um, so when I started working at Lakehead, um, my research was really focused around the biomechanics of occupational health and safety. Um, so I did, like I said, my primary research partner partner at that time was Slender Bay Fire Rescue. Um, and we started looking at how people, how firefighters move. So it was kind of a really cool project. Uh, we worked with the fire service here. Uh, they were in their full bunker gear. I had a couple of graduate students and a couple of undergraduate students working with them in their training facility, uh, watching them. And we were collected video to see, you know, how, and later analyze that video. So they were doing um, they were dragging like a charged hose like they would do on a scene and measuring some of the kinematics, how people move, some of the physiological response. So I do a lot of work with wearable technology as well. Uh, so we had them wearing uh, this wearable technology over 24 hour shifts. They work 24 hour shifts here. Uh, so that was a really cool project and just looking to see uh, the physiological and physical burden of, you know, firefighting. Like, what does that look like? And there has been, um, you know, other work that's been done in that space. But Thunder Bay is a really unique context. Um, we're the one service that sort of supplies and supports uh, fire rescue uh, more widely in Northwestern Ontario. So a really unique context um, and really cool findings. And I've hired uh, many students along the path to analyze a lot of that physiological data. So I had the opportunity to present that at a few um, conferences as well, which has been really fascinating. And uh, students really enjoy working with that wearable technology, looking at some of those indices, uh, seeing how function and, and you know physical components of work um, get impacted by that. Um, and then more recently, my research is really focused on mental health in these particular groups. So I'll just highlight two big projects. The one again with Thund was with Thunder Bay Fire Rescue. Um, and I think when I do applied research, one of the most rewarding outputs from that work is when I can actually have impact on the way uh, a particular behavior is being performed or have impact on um, you know, a positive impact on um, with my occupational health or uh, my partner. And this is a perfect example of that. So we worked really closely for about two or three years at looking at the mental health burden within Thunder Bay Fire Rescue. Um, and they were using a, a peer support model, primarily a peer support model. And we built a lot of evidence to start, that started to be show not only did they have a high mental health burden, but the way they were managing that might not be working in the best way for them. And we were able to measure that in a lot of you know, looking at um, sort of the response of the firefighters, but also looking at some of those mental health indices. Um, so we took a step back, the chief and the union and my knowledge user, we, we kind of took a look at that and we said, hey, no, this isn't working. What should we be doing? And we actually had a significant pivot on how they manage their mental health and they're using evidence informed approach now. They were able to integrate some of uh, the research we had done uh, to inform that change. And everyone's in a much better place they have readily access now to a psychologist here. Um, and that was largely due to the work that we partnered with them. So super proud of that work um, and super proud of my partner for leading that work. So that's a really important output. Um, took a, a lot of students worked on that project. Um, we worked on that project for about three or four years. So many graduate students and many undergraduate students worked on that project. Um, so congratulations to them. Um, and mostly congratulations to the research partner for, for supporting that, that, that path. Um, so that's the one big project I think that we delivered on from my lab. And then the other project that we're currently finishing up is with Treaty 3 Police, uh, which is the police service that services the communities in northwestern Ontario. Uh, so largely Indigenous um, police officers and really understanding their mental health burden and thinking about how should and how can they manage their mental health burden, which looks actually um, different from what we've 
what we saw uh, within the fire service, um, you know, when we have indigenous police officers serving in those communities, there was, um, you know, a call for returning back to traditional ways of healing, um, which isn't what they're currently using. So we're working as a team to meet, to evaluate that and to look at that and see how we can start implementing that into practice. That's really interesting to hear because obviously, uh, from my perspective, I come from the business world. So one might be able to sort of paint with really broad strokes and say that the work that you did with the the fire services, you could sort of copy paste that approach and it, it should work for everyone that works in the first responder world. But as you noted, it's a very different world. And so having uh, really great partnerships that you've been developing for years, I know that uh, from our own discussions many, many years ago, I, I've learned about your research. So it's always exciting to hear as it comes to so, sort of full circle or or comes to fruition of to what the results are great to hear that there's a significant impact within our community and hopefully one day our audience will be able to help support that that research as well um as we wrap things up here folks i wanted to uh take this opportunity to remind you sort of where can you take your kinesiology degrees whether you're pursuing a bachelor's of kinesiology whether you're pairing that with our faculty of education perhaps you're pursuing one of our graduate programs um, we have them grouped into two different fields, although I always like to note and remind viewers, by no means is this an exhaustive list. If we had a list of everywhere our grads have gone, we'd be here for another 20 slides after this one. Um, but this gives you a nice taste to sort of where you may be able to take your career perhaps one day. I won't read them off for you. You can uh, browse over them yourself. And of course, when you actually join the program, I hope that you'll take the, the opportunity to actually sit down and connect with your professors. That's one of the great things about here, studying here at Lakehead is our small classroom experiences allow you to facilitate more deep and enriched connections with your peers and your professors, and they'll be able to support uh, that, that sort of job search or career exploration as they understand where you would like to go one day. Um, I also want to take this opportunity to just chat about one uh, outstanding alumni. This is Jessica Smith. She graduated with our Honours Bachelor of Kinesiology in 2014. She is now a physiotherapist in Coburg, Ontario at an orthopedic sports injury clinic. Um, in reflecting on her Lakehead experience, she simply shared that uh, as a student athlete, she was sort of immersed in that environment of sports medicine and, and that she had that dedicated team of her professors and advisors that helped her navigate that acad academic journey, which now has led to uh, becoming a professional in the field herself. So uh, some some great rare, um, words to hear from our alumni in terms of that support and the um, just experience that she had here at Lake and how that influenced the outcome in terms of securing gainful employment and something that she is passionate about. Uh, there's more stories about our, our graduates and our uh, kinesiologists online. If you visit lakeadu.ca forward slash international, you can view all of our student profiles that we have published over there. With that being said, this does wrap up our formal presentation on kinesiology. Next, we're going to head over into our live question and answer period. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, I want to encourage you to comment below or connect with us on social media. We can be found at Lakehead International on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Thanks for watching once again, and hopefully we'll see you at the next live webinar. Bye for now.